Has this ever happened to you? You get into your fighter, fighter bomber, or bomber, and you head out to do your mission. The mission has been assigned and you're ready to rock, but upon arriving, you find yourself in a pickle. Well, you want to release the missile or bomb with your pickle button, but you realize that you haven't subscribed to this channel, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. The solution is cluster bombs and cluster munitions. Forbidden by international convention, but United States, Russia, China, and India don't care and still use them. Well, in DCS world, we've got those options as well and we're ready to rock. So let's check out how cluster munitions can make short work of columns of enemy infantry or tanks or trucks. Here we go. This is the Russian cluster munition KMGU and RBK 500 edition of the DCS weapons report. First off, a little bit of historical reference. The cluster munition convention came into power in 2010 because during wars of the 20th century where cluster munitions were first invented and used, there was a lot of cluster bombs left in gardens, backyards, valleys, trees, forests, all over the place. Why? Well, unlike a regular bomb, a cluster bomb is one big bomb with a whole bunch of smaller submunitions or bomblets inside of it. These bomblets can vary in size and type. So for example, there are anti-personnel submunitions such as the AORT munitions that are in the Russian cluster bombs or there are PTAB, Protivotankovaya Aviazone Bomba, otherwise an anti-tank aerial bomb. And these are also submunitions that fit into bigger cluster bombs. But it's not the inside, but the outside that counts first because we got to put all those tiny little destructive bombs somewhere and we would stick them into two types of delivery methods. One is the RBK and the other one is the KMGU. Both are available on the SU-27, which I'll be doing the drops from in this video. Now, the RBK stands for Single Use Cluster Munitions, otherwise in Russian, Razove Bombovy Kassety which basically is single-use cluster munitions. And the KMGU is a multifunctional universal container for small-sized objects and cargo. Otherwise, container malagabridnych gruzov universalny. They both sound pretty bad, whether it's in English or in Russian, but the idea is really simple. What happens is, in a KMGU, it's basically a pod that gets filled with cluster munitions at a certain location and time. You will open it up and it will drop out the munitions down towards the unsuspecting targets. In the RBK 500, you have the cluster munitions packed inside of a larger bomb that is shaped like a cylinder which gets released off the airplane. Mid-flight, the cluster munitions will separate from within the bomb and head towards their target. In one case, you are dropping them in very much like a row or a linear fashion, which is good for taking out convoys. In the second type, it is more of a targeted drops, much more effective for targets which are tight together in small areas or individual pieces of armor such as individual tanks. So let's go one by one and check out the munitions starting with the deployment systems. So KMGU-2 is a container that is attached to an aircraft. It's available on all Russian aircraft. It is not available on any of the Chinese aircraft such as the J-11. So the Russian Su-27, Su-25, and SU-33 are able to use this weapon. It carries 96 bomblets of two types, AO and PTAB, and is attached externally. The KMGU container is conforming and does not produce as much air resistance as bombs. Nonetheless, it adds drag to your airplane and of course reduces maneuverability. SU-27 can carry five KMGU containers, SU-33 can carry seven, and the SU-25 carries a whopping eight KMGU containers and each one can carry up to 96 bomblets. Let's talk deployment. The KMGU is switched on by going into mode seven, which is air to ground attack and holding the weapon release button on a Russian plane. While the weapon release is active, you will see a circle above your pip in the center of the HUD. You keep your pip in the center of the circle as you go in for the attack. The weapon will auto release. You do not need to pull on the trigger again. Just keep holding it through until you hear the clicking sound of the payload being released from the KMG. Mm -hmm. It should be executed 
at at least 300 to 500 meters, that's 900 to 1500 feet, to ensure that you are avoiding any sort of after effect blasts. Although the blast from a KMG is much smaller than that of a 500 pound bomb. And that is because you have smaller bomblets which are spread across following the path of your overflight. Therefore, the destruction is spread out and damage is carried out across a longer range. The more KMGU containers you have, the longer the path of destruction will be. However, you must keep in mind that every plane is limited to how many KMGUs you can carry. Unlike other bombs, KMGU containers do not fall away from your plane once you've depleted their ammunition. The KMGU containers stay on your plane and continue to give you some drag. So if you do want to get rid of them, you are able to use the weapon drop function to drop those containers and give you back aerodynamic qualities. So we know what the KMG looks like and how it works. Now, what are the weapon components within it? The KMG carries either the PTAB 25KO or the AO25RT. The AO25RT is designed to go against personnel. It's basically an explosive in a shrapnel case and will not do much damage to any tanks, but it may do some very light damage to completely unarmed vehicles such as trucks. On the other hand, the PTAB 25 is a shape charge which is fin stabilized to make sure that it falls towards the ground with the front of the explosive facing the vehicles and will do greater damage to APCs lightly armed tanks and other vehicles although the damage against larger heavier armed tanks such as an Abrams or a T90 would be questionable and limited. Now, I am going to approach here and do one more run, but I have changed out my loadout. Now the 2.5 KOs are inside of an RBK 500. But this is a very different thing that happens here. Here are the 2.5 KOs, and we're actually able to watch the swarm of the bomblets as they head towards the tanks. You'll see something very different here though. The 2.5 KOs when dropped out of an RBK 500 bomb instead of a KMGU dispenser are dropping in a focused fashion. They're not doing a strip along the ground like the KMGU does, but they did quite a bit more damage to the Abrams because more of them hit on target in a central area. So in this case, we're switching over to the RBK 500 that you just saw deployed, and I'm going to be using the RBK 10-5 submunition so rbk 500 p tab 10 5 the 10 5 is the preferred submunition to be used against harder targets such as tanks and other armored vehicles which do have a level of armor however there are less of them inside of each bomb so once again heading down towards the target hold the pickle once it's locked keeping the central point of the HUD in the circle, the bomb gets auto-released, in this case four bombs, and you'll see the difference. So before we were dropping them out of KMGUs, which were two or three containers, here we have four RBK 500s. Again, on approach, you could dive bomb with this munition, but it's not my favorite way to go because of what happens. And you saw this in a previous moment there with the uh, 2.5 KOs. In this case, it's the 10 fives inside of these. First detonation, this is to separate the front of the container. Second detonation, that is to separate the individual bomblets from the carrier. And now we have a swarm of PTAB 10 fives on their way towards the ground targets. Is there a difference about the altitude of the drop? Yes. If you are too low, the first and second separation will not happen and you will not do any damage to your target. If you drop it too high, the bomblets will disperse a bit more, but not sufficiently to make a difference. A drop of 1000 to 1500 meters is preferred. Let's do this from another angle so you get the idea of how this works. I'm technical, so for me, it really helps to see how these bomblets work and what they do. So there's the first separation, which kicks off the top part of the canister, revealing the bomblets inside on the rail. 
So here they are, ready to further disperse. So there's a second explosion detonation, and now the bomblets are separated and heading down towards the ground. Again, make sure you have enough altitude when you're doing these drops. I do not recommend doing dive bomb missions with this weapon because you need a lot of clearance for the weapon to actually separate. Level flight at at least a thousand meters. You can go a little bit lower as well, but I would say usually about a thousand meters for me is what I prefer to do a drop. So that's 3000 feet for those who are using Imperial measurements for some reason on a Russian plane. Now, as you can see, the containers are left behind and the bomblets are on their way down towards the ground. There is definitely a consistent swarm of them. They do not leave that long horizontal strip along the ground of death and destruction. Rather, they form almost a circle or an oval when they hit the ground. And we have our first detonation. First couple of bomblets hit the top of the first Abrams doing 48% damage. And then the second Abrams got to about 30% damage. And as you can see, there is your effect from the PTAB 10.5s. If you are going to use the PTAB 2.5, do not try to target Abrams or other hardened vehicles. You're not going to have much luck. Ground-based airplanes, perfect. Ground-based trucks, perfect. APCs, sure thing. But you do need something with a bit more kick for a tank. As you can see here, the first PTAB hit the tank in the turret area and that tank is out of commission and the rest of them hit the second tank you do not get that wide area of effect so realistically i would not pack more than two ptab 500s since they will drop at the same time there is a bug within dcs which will prevent you from dropping your ptab 500s individually i have not been able to do it if you have been let me know in the comment so then the obvious question is, will it going higher and releasing the bomb at higher altitude allow you to expand the radius of your death and destruction below? No. So here I've climbed to 3,900 meters, dropped the P-tabs, and they separated just like they should. Looks like at a much higher altitude, definitely a much higher altitude, but despite that, they actually still formed a circle with about the same radius. So not much of a difference. Now, you can also do a dive run with a RBK. The only problem with doing a dive with an RBK is that if you release it too late, your RBK will not separate and the P-tabs will not come out of the container and separate, which means that they will do no damage whatsoever. In theory, if they were probably to hit the ground all at the same time in the real world, they would probably set off one heck of an explosion, but in DCS, not really. Despite the fact that there is explosives inside of each P-tab, here I've got the two bombs going down, I've dropped them, I'm in the dive. Somehow I get in front of the bombs, probably because I was giving a little bit of gas here. Thank goodness I got out of the way. But the P-tabs do not properly separate out of the weapon and do not disperse. If they had dispersed, those trucks would have been goners, but because I dropped the bomb too low, the actual individual munitions did not separate. And as a result, no kill, no joy, no fun. So there is your video. Let me know in the comments if you've had weird bugs with this weapon as well. Hopefully you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe of course.